Jay Sano without intro music. Jay Sano with intro music. Intro music remix. Hello everybody, welcome back. It is Jeff again coming to you from the Minecraft server and I'm back home at my base. You guys watched me get there on Thanksgiving uh, with my I am thankful for episode. Uh, but I figure what I'm going to do around here today is get some terraforming completed. Uh, I've gotten a decent amount of snow. It takes you know quite a while to actually get snow because you have to form it which is gets really annoying i figured to start with this terraforming act i was going to cover up all forms of dirt and then go from there and make it look all slopey and cool but until i get all the dirt covered it's going to be hard to just make it look right so just kind of building my way through and covering the front of this dirt so this is going to be you know we knew this was going to take a long time when i started in on this endeavor and you guys are just going to get to come along for the ride. But what that means is I have some time to talk to you folks. So some people were asking for the union update. And I can give you the union update. So we had our vote for ratification of the hospital's quote unquote last best and final offer. Which is what I discussed in my last video on how you know they were no longer at the bargaining table. We were going to have our vote. We had our vote um, two and a half or three weeks ago now. It's been quite a while. And the overall whoops, majority of those who voted by 85% was to not accept management's last best and final offer, which by not accepting that offer, we also authorized action up to and including a one day strike. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. One day strikes, what is that going to do? Um, well, it depends. <laughs> it depends on how willing to actually whoops, come to an agreement both sides end up being. So I've been at the hospital already for a one day strike. It was my first year. I, had, I was baby nurse and... Didn't really know what everything meant, but I was told how great it was going to be because given the one day strike, you know, the hospital doesn't want to, you know, lose the nurses for that one day. So hopefully it brings them back to the bargaining table. And if they do end up striking because we can't come to an agreement, then, you know, it, the hospital ends up realizing how we are strong. We are united. We are standing together and we're not going to, you know, give in to this contract that you're trying to give us so after all is said and done, you now realize that we're more than just talk. We are action. Therefore, let's go through and make this thing better. Unfortunately, the last strike didn't end with good things. So what happened was we went on strike. We got locked out of the hospital for five days post strike. And they have a legal right to lock you out for a reasonable time frame because to cover the hospital for a strike, you need to get nurses who are going to work. Because the hospital isn't shut down. You Somebody still needs to work and take care of the patients and things like that. So they brought in this strike nurse agency who said uh, we demand a five-day minimum working period, which is, I guess, pretty typical. And so we had to, we knew that we were going to be only striking for one day, but locked out for up to five days after the strike. That's exactly what happened. They locked us out for five days. We came back to work after, you know, the five day lockout and they went back to the bargaining table for negotiations. Unfortunately, there was absolutely zero progress made in the negotiations. And at one point management just said, fine, we're implementing this contract. We don't care anymore. And then it got heated and long story short, we they went back to the bargaining table and we ended up accepting a very subpar contract. So in the last contract, we lost our asses. We lost a lot of money. We lost a lot of vacation. We really got like killed in our differentials. I, my take home paychecks currently to date are less money than they were my first year as a nurse because we lost a lot in the last 
um, contract negotiation, which which is what we don't want to happen again. So this time we're not the offer that the hospital made was not actually to cut a lot of things. Luckily, like the last one was significant cuts, just cuts on everything, cuts everywhere. Uh, nothing really good for the nurses. This one gives us some good things. Um, it doesn't cut our salaries or anything like that. However, we're trying to build up that ground again that we lost last time. So the set, the contract that we've been offered that we have denied isn't even close to what we were making before. And not that we necessarily expect that we are going to make the exact amount of money we were before, but we're trying to get somewhere close. And they're also trying to enforce like safe patient staffing ratios, a lot of this random stuff, but either way. So that's what happened in the last strike. So this time we voted to deny, which approved a strike, which was planned for the holiday. It was originally since like the negotiation started, we knew when the contract was going to end and they were like, if you, we can't come to an agreement, what we're going to do is we're going to strike the weekend after Thanksgiving. So randomly somewhere we said no we don't want this this contract the union is then supposed to if we're going to strike is then supposed to go and give our notice for strike because we're required to give a 10-day notice for a strike so the 10-day notice never happened the union was hoping that us saying that we were going to strike was going to be enough to bring the hospital back to the bargaining table and the hospital still refused to go back to the bargaining table. And why, when the hospital still refused to go back to the bargaining table, did the union not then give the strike notice is beyond me. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I think they were still just trying to see if we could come to some type of an agreement and avoid a strike. But we never came to, we never gave 10-day notice for a strike. And then, just like last time, the hospital basically said, um, so we are, you know, despite what's happening, we're just going to arbitrarily implement part of these contract things anyway that you guys, that we've offered, you guys have denied, uh, but we're going to implement them anyway, which... It is not actually a horrible thing because the things that they implemented, ironically, were the a few of the very good things in like the um, the wage increases, which don't well, well. So there's there's step increases that you get every year, and they're laid out in a little chart because we're unionized, so it's like very transparent on what everybody makes. It's specifically based on years of service. That is all not performance, not merit, nothing. It's just straight up based on years of service. So for X number of years of service, you will make X number of dollars uh, per hour. Uh, for X number of years of service, you'll make X dollars per hour. So basically, they, we were trying to get that raised. The hospital doesn't want to raise the, because right now it, it's like 1.8% every year or something like that, which doesn't even match the cost of living. So we were like, hey, we want it to be higher. And the hospital was like, no, we're we're so good to you already. And that was one of the big like sticking points in the uh, in the contract. So Technically, when the contract ends, those step increases, even the ones that already are in existence, the 1.8%, don't exist anymore because they're part of the contract. So therefore, since we are no longer on contract, we no longer get step increases if you cross a year threshold while we're off contract. So the hospital, one of the things the hospital actually implemented uh, was we'll put the step increases back because we don't want people to lose money. So they're actually not implementing things that are like very detrimental like they did last time. Last time they imp implemented just a bunch of ridiculously detrimental uh, things like they're like, well, we're just going to arbitrarily implement the shift differential lower uh, decreases that we are going to uh, put into place in the contract that you denied. But they just implemented it anyway last time. This time's a little bit better because they're not, like I said, implementing those type of things because... I don't know exactly why. And they're actually implementing for absolutely no reason good things. So that's kind of like a kudos on the hospital part. But that being said, we haven't done anything as a union or whatnot to come back and deal with anything. The, the union even sent out an email a couple, like about a week and a half ago. And they said something like, guys, you know, the hospital still refuses to come back to the bargaining table. We're going to 
have to uh, put in our notice for strike because this is getting ridiculous. You know, you know, they won't come to the table and listen to us, even though we've denied their contract. Yet they still haven't gone through and and given the notice. So I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure on what's going on, which is not good from a member perspective because I should be able to know what's going on with my union and I really have no idea what's going through their minds anymore. So that's kind of oh monsters get away. So that's kind of scary to me. But at the same time, I we're not on a contract right now. So it's weird. We're just arbitrarily like hey, we're we're working off contract. So <laughs> we just we just keep working as if nothing's really going on. So I'm not sure what's going to happen at this point. Maybe the union's waiting until the Christmas holiday because they've always had this thing where they, oh you son of a they've always had this thing where they really wanted to do it over a holiday break because they feel that that's going to be the most detrimental to the hospital and they're by showing that how much it's going to cost them to get these strike nurses to come in then they are going to it's we're going to force their hand to come back to the bargaining table so that we don't strike and I'm not sure if it's going to work out that way or not but that's the union's philosophy so they might be trying to get it to happen over the Christmas holiday. I'm I'm really not sure. And I guess since it's not 10 days till Christmas yet, and they will definitely give last minute 10 day notice. They We have to give a minimum 10 day notice. They will give a 10 day notice and that is all to make it as hard as they can on the hospital. It's kind of, it, it's it's a game. It's all a game. The problem is it's our livelihoods and, and money on the line and things like that. So I don't know. I'll keep you guys. Whoa, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. I hate you with all pieces of my body you piece of shit <sighs> okay okay i hope i didn't mess up the top too bad it's so much work to get this uh to get this thing like together right uh so mad but what are you gonna do um i can't get out there so, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll keep you guys informed. Uh, the one thing that we do know is the hospitals tried to say that if we do strike this time, that they're going to lock us out of the hospital for 10 days. A one-day strike, and they want to lock us out for 10. And their rationale for that is they're claiming that the, the strike agency said that they're requiring a minimum of a 10-day contract. And there's some things that go... Uh, that go into that legally with you have to lockouts are allowed to you know within certain reason on what's the acceptable standard amongst you know other strikes and things like that in the country and it's been pretty much unheard of for a 10-day lockout so i know that they're trying to fight that because that that's a hospital tactic why are there so many damn creepers that's a hospital tactic that they're trying to get people to not strike because they feel like, and there is a lot of people that probably wouldn't strike if it was a 10-day lockout, uh, to be honest. We have a lot of people there who, they live paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford, they can barely afford to be out for the one day. Some of them may be willing and they're going to try to come out for the five days. I already know a lot of people who said they can't afford to around the holidays come out for a five-day strike. Um, and let alone make it 10, you're going to lose a bunch more people. Which is, it's sad because... We need to show that we're united and that we're willing to like put ourselves out there to fight for what we feel like we've rightly earned. And people who don't based on, well, I can't lose the money right this second, so therefore I'll just lose the money for the long term. They're really missing out on big long term. It's really a short-sighted way of seeing things. I understand it completely, but it is a short-sighted way of seeing things. Uh, because we're trying to build up for the future of our, what the next contract negotiation. We don't want to be still fighting to make up ground from the last one we lost. We want to be closer to what we were at before so we can actually start making improvements in things. And uh, unfortunately, though, we have a lot of people who don't plan on being at the hospital during the next contract because they, they only plan on being here for another like year, maybe two, and that's going to be it. So they don't want to fight and lose their own money now for something that's not going to benefit them in the future. And I understand it. It's kind of selfish, but I completely understand it. But it's going to definitely cause a problem with actually making progress in the, in the strike stuff. But So that's what's going on with that, and we'll find out. Speaking of hospital stuff, though, talk about 
inefficiency. I, I am, well, that's a couple things, actually. I'm asked to be on the, we're, we're about to go through the third phase of our electronic health record implementation stuff. Uh, they're start, they're starting it, they're kicking it off. So it's going to be a couple of years before it's done, but I was on the second phase design team. And then I switched over to, you know, nursing informatics and, um, was actually one of the implementers because of, you know, my, my new degree and things like that. And I have been asked to be on the MedConnect that's what they call it, it's MedConnect, the MedConnect 3 Device Selection Committee. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem, I'll, I'll do that. And I was asked by my old nursing informatics supervisor, um, yeah, we'll get into that one later, to be part of this. And I said, sure, I'll be part of this. But the problem is, she keeps emailing me and saying, well, were you at this meeting? And you need to make sure you go to these meetings for this stuff and all they're doing is that they're scheduling meetings during an, a normal work day and then getting mad at me when i can't go to them i don't know if they forgot the fact that i am not an office person anymore i am now a bedside nurse yet again and especially when i'm working night shift i'm sorry but i'm not going to make it to a noon meeting the day after i work a night shift it's just not going to happen so <laughs> i'm not exactly sure what's what's going on with this committee that I'm on because I'm completely out of the loop and pretty much being told it's my fault that I'm out of the loop since I'm not attending these meetings, though I'm a bedside nurse. So I don't get that, but that's not what I was going to say. I was actually going to talk about inefficiency and I'm back in the emergency department and I couldn't, this baffled me. Um, with all the, the big push for like lean and six sigma and things like that nowadays, it's all about eliminating waste. What do you do to eliminate waste? You get rid of stupid things that make absolutely no sense. So I was triaging the other day. We had an ambulance roll in with a an unconscious, not really unconscious. He was he was passed out due to alcohol. So he wasn't unconscious per se, but I mean he was not cooperative, not talking, wouldn't tell us his name. He didn't have an ID on him, things like that. So I walked up to our registration clerk and I was like, look, can you register me at John Doe because I can't get this guy's information. And normally what we do is we have a little teeny slip of paper, it's like a half sheet of paper, that you write down their name, their soch, their um, their date of birth, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and whether they came in by ambulance, all this stuff. And you give it to the registration clerk so you can go back and start dealing with the patient and they can start getting them in the system and get everything important in there. And I, I just walked up to her and said, can you register me a John Doe? And the John Doe's go in, they're a standard age, a standard birth date, um, you know, standard names. They're not all just John Doe. It's like John Echo Doe and John Bravo Doe and all these things like based on where they're at in the list. And she goes, I need the paper. And I was like, what paper? She goes, the registration paper. I said, but I don't know his information to put in stuff on there. She's like, it doesn't matter. I need the paper. And I said, this seems a little bit unnecessary to me. I said, what do you want me to do? Bring you a piece of paper and write John Doe on it. And that's it. And she's like, yup, that's policy. I need the paper. So I was giving her a hard time the entire time about doing it. I, I went and grabbed the piece of paper and I wrote John Doe on it. And I was like, this seems a little bit ridiculous and, uh, and redundant. And she's like, I don't, know, I don't know what to tell you, Jeff. It's just the policy. We need to have this thing. So I want to bring that up to the attention of my my registration like staff and the boss. Because what is the purpose of putting a piece of paper? Because I, I had to walk back from the registration desk, back up to the front of triage to grab the piece of paper, to write John Doe on it, to walk back to the registration person to hand it to them, even though it's a standard process. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, I'm sure it's for record keeping. You don't keep records on paper anymore in an electronic system. Like, granted, there are some paper records that we keep, but when they're in an electronic system, there, the, the point is to eliminate paper records. Therefore, we don't need our registration stuff on paper anymore when they get registered in the computer system. So I'm going to have a nice talk with my registration person who, her and I, we get along okay um, because I did a lot of work for her when I was on the informatics side. But she's very, let's say, particular about her style and the way she does things but again it's not thinking about as the boss 
she's not somebody who's on the front lines doing it on a regular basis. So from a registration standpoint and from the perspective of policies that she implements for registration stuff, she doesn't understand the implications it has on the rest of the staff, like her registration staff, as well as just like the nurses, the doctors, etc. Because that was a significant delay in patient care just for the aspect of they wanted a piece of paper that said the words John Doe on it before they could give me a person in the computer named John Doe, which just, it makes absolutely no sense. But that's the, you would think that hospitals are some of the most technologically upgraded places because I mean, look, we, we, tr I can take, a, I, I physically can't, but at a hospital, you can get somebody's heart transferred into a, somebody else's body so that they can live. You can't tell me that we have that much inefficiency in the rest of the system when we're capable of things like that. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. But I mean, that, that sadly is the way it is. I'm trying to get a good view down here now. I feel like I made a decent amount of progress. I went through like 10 stacks of, of snow and terraforming the front of this thing. I think the, the roof of Beef's house is probably the best view. Look at that fancy door. I like vintage beefs as self-portrait over there. Oh, I need to get to the roof. <laughs> yes. Vintage beefs self-portrait. Awesome. Uh how do I get up here? Parkour! Uh oh whatever. It is coming along nicely up there. That side is looking good. The back's looking good, at least from here. And I'm sure up closer it looks. That was weird. This block broke in a very funny way. Some of them aren't taking... They're not doing the block animation on a lot of them. That's strange. I wonder if that's a... Uh, a fault of the... The pre... 182... Or 181 pre 2 or whatever it's called. That's what we're still running on, because I don't think we're prepared for the 181 that it's stable enough yet for our server, or if we just haven't upgraded yet. I don't keep up on a lot of the server stuff to know when you know things are going really well and when they're not. So that looks good over there. That's looking good over there. I'm, this thing is making a lot of nice progress. Uh, the terraforming part. There's a couple of holes over here I kind of want to fix before I... There we go. That makes this side much better. There's some down there, but I can get to those later. So, anyways, this was the update video you guys had so requested from me. We're just going to sneak into the house. And got an update on nurses, on the union, and you got an update on just kind of like some random things going on at work. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.